Well, they say that life is all about the cash, isn't it? Well, even then, is that not kind of a lie? I mean, let's be frank. I held up American money just because it looks more like money, whereas Canadian money looks more like, well, something you find in like a game that you bought at a game store and not really like money in the real world. I happen to think that life is not just about the cash. And because of the way that I view the world, I've been able to create a shape for myself within the gig economy, which means that I haven't had a full-time job really during this millennium. For, for at least two decades, I have not had a full-time, full contract job for more than five months at a time. But instead of taking contracts, this lifestyle, of course, has a lot of uh, insecurity about it, but it is also increasingly the norm for how we live in the world, where we go from job to job and career to career. And so I wanted to give some advice that I have learned myself about what it means to live in a gig economy long before that term came up, long before I thought of it as going from gig to gig or from project to project, exercise to exercise. Okay. These are just the basics and they're really just things that I've learned because it would be completely irresponsible for me to talk about money in any other kind of way because I just haven't made the money. You know, I, I am allowed to borrow uh, American money when I have videos and that's really the extent of my ability here. However, I've made it to this point in my life. I've managed to complete a number of degrees. Uh, we have a home that's nearly paid for, a son that's uh, in college and so these are things that uh, we've been able to do because of the choices that we've made based on these principles that began when when I was a student I, I began this stuff in my very first year of undergraduate school and these are things that can help a, a long way okay first the very first thing is to realize the principle behind all <laughs> of the money stuff is that you spend less than you make. Now, this is honestly a really problematic way of putting it. None of us can think in that way. And so my tips are really about ways of protecting ourselves so that we don't break that rule in any kind of way that is unsustainable. I'll include another conversation about uh, how to think about student loans. That's a different kind of a debt. That's a different kind of a question. In this case, how do we think about how to make the money thing balance in principle, even when we only have a little bit of it? Okay, so the, the very first thing, and, and this will sound odd, the very first thing is learning how to give some of that money away. My, I remember getting my first gig check when I was in undergrad. It was for $60, $50 for a week. It wasn't that much money, but I immediately began to section off some of those things. So 10% of that money went to charity and 10% of that money went to savings and 10% of that money went towards something fun I wanted to do, basically to go to a conference in the, in the next semester. And that doesn't seem like much. Taking a few dollars off doesn't seem like much. And yet this is absolutely critical. Learning how not to think of your paycheck as all yours is super huge. And I even did this when I would get tips and tip money. I used to save that tip money for things that were particular. I saved for my wedding. I was able to, with all the loonies and toonies, Canadian one and two dollar uh, coins, I was able to collect over my undergraduate life. I was able to pay for my honeymoon right after I graduated. These are things that are critical because your tax load will increase as your income increases and things like surprise events in your life are going to tax your ability to be able to manage all these things. So I came to think of about half of my paycheck is really mine and the other half belongs to these other things, long-term taxes, charity and church and things like that. So the first thing is to learn how to give it away and don't think of the whole thing as your own because it really isn't. Um, not if you intend to live in the gig economy and also be a taxpayer. A second thing is to learn to build flexibility in your lifestyle. And this is 
super critical from day one when the lifestyle choices are, are small. Because the reality is we don't, most of us, get in financial trouble because we go out and, and blow all of our money on a Las Vegas trip and, and uh, max our credit cards on a single event. What happens is sort of the death of a thousand stream services. We actually slowly build up the expectations in our lives so that we find ourselves spending too much money. So that we get, the, you know, Spotify and Netflix or Prime or something like that. And we slowly build these little things into our lives that little by little add up to quite a lot. And that's where we can get ourselves into trouble. And so part of the principle of this in my life has been to live as simply as possible um, and then to consider everything on top of that as extra. And so that includes things like streaming services. Each of those are a choice for us. And we have to say no to some streaming services when we uh, pick up others. It's just a choice that we have to make because the money doesn't go forever. And those things sound like they're small, but again, all of this, all of this happens little by little. The adulting reality is something that comes upon us little by little. It's not a sudden surprise. Oh, I got my first adult job, my first adult paycheck, and my first adult tax bill. It actually comes little by little, starting with things. And so that's where we begin with simplicity. Um, it, I choose to buy the clothes I buy in a certain kind of way, and the food I buy in a certain kind of way, and the investments on my home in a certain kind of way, based on a principle of simplicity, not on how much money can I get away with spending. It, it's just a change that you have to make in order to, to have that gig economy type flexible lifestyle. Because if you're going to live in this AI economy world, this new generation that's coming, you just simply don't know what's coming ahead. What is the next disruption? Is it going to be another pandemic? Is it going to be that AI disrupts the entire workforce? Is there gonna be something environmental or catastrophic that will affect your economy? We just don't know. And so being able to live simply allows you the flexibility to go anywhere at any time. When my wife and I um, finished a job in Western Canada and Alberta, we decided to move to Japan and we simply could do that because we had a flexible, movable, simple lifestyle. Okay. Number three is you need to build economies of support. Now, these are not just people that will give you money. Uh, finding those are actually kind of interesting. Finding people who will just give you money. That If you can do that, that's good for you. What I mean is a whole life support uh, thing. If we were to have catastrophic uh, failure, financial failure now, it's true, we would you know, lose everything that we've been saving and all that kind of stuff. But we wouldn't, we wouldn't go hungry and, and we'd have a place to stay, at least for a while. We've built up a network of friends and uh, business partners and people in our church, people in our community who would be able to help us. Um, my extended family would, would help, even though you know, we don't have all these personal everyday connections, they'd still be willing to do so. This is a luxury, a privilege, and the, that, that this is in our lives, but it did come also with intentional building of relationship and recognizing the need to say we need help at certain times, and we've done so. And we do it anxiously, and yet whenever our friends have asked for help, we've had no problem responding to that. So building a network of support increases your flexibility and allows you to stay in this world. Uh, the third thing is kind of hard, and it's to curb self-delusion. Well, I guess that's the fourth thing. Maybe that's a self-delusion. But what I mean is this, it's like, I have this kind of belief that when I look at money stuff, that if I need to buy something, it's just gonna work out. That's actually not true. It's, it's just not true. We, we, the world doesn't work that way, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I don't know. Uh, I've had to learn how to, to read a spreadsheet, to balance things, because I needed to keep my mind and self accountable to the fact that I'm spending the money. I know where the money's going. And I'm very much committed to self-delusion in my life, so I'd be, it would be very easy for me not to open up the bills, not to open up those PDFs that are emailed to me and find out what it is that I've been spending. 
Uh, so this this fourth part, this avoiding self-delusion, is, is really about finding ways to tell the truth to yourself about what you're actually doing financially. Tell the truth to your partners and your family. And if you're a single, find an accountability partner if you are also, like me, tempted to self-delusion. Just somebody who's going to ask you hard questions to help you keep on top of the things that you're spending and the things that are coming at you in difficult ways. Or when you do something that's embarrassing, like forget to pay a credit card bill and now there's this rolling kind of interest situation or miss a payment to school and, and forget that that's happened and now find yourself in trouble because you can't register for the next semester. Having that financial accountability partner can be really key, whether that's your partner, your roommate, friends, um, family, or, or somebody that you intentionally recruit to help you out with that. And, and I know there's lots of people uh, that work in the professional world that will be willing to do that sort of thing. Okay, so what we've done is we've learned to view money not quite as our own, uh, it, so tithing and, and saving and things like that. We've learned to build fle flexibility by having a simple lifestyle. We've learned that um, we need to have a self-support network, a community of care, an economy of care, and we've learned to count by learning about self-delusion. That self-delusion aspect includes scams. Students are super high on the list of people that that companies will try to scam or individuals will try to scam uh, and, and in fact like 70 percent of scams right now as some say as much as 80 percent of scams are happening through social media and who are the big social media users right it's the it's the you know the 14 to 34 age group that's the biggest connectivity point and that is where the scam is happening and international students or students moving from state to state or province to province are at the highest risk for these scams because you are most likely not to know something very technical that a scam artist might know. I mean, not just about your life, but about your school, about your government. And so it's, and, and I've been an immigrant in another country. I know what it's like to hold a visa and to know that at any moment, one of my mistakes could get me kicked out of that country. So part of self-delusion is not making the kinds of quick decisions that scams often require and making sure that your friends know who your relationships are online or with others uh, just just be careful okay uh and a number five i guess it is uh, the final kind of thing is to start to build for yourself a portfolio a financial portfolio i, I didn't have much money and then I got married and we didn't have much money for a lot of years because we made these other choices. When it came time to get to a mortgage, we, we had very little in terms of like the big financial things that you can put on a page. However, our credit scores were really high. Uh, the banks trusted us. We had years of experience with these banks. Building a, a financial profile can really help you when it comes time to getting a mortgage or starting, uh, a, you know, getting a business loan or getting some startup capital funding. These are the kinds of things that that a, a strong financial portfolio can help. So, f for example, uh, make sure that you are on the the lease. Make sure that your name is on the lease if at all possible, because that's a kind of financial stability. Make sure that your name is on. Uh, any of the utilities that go with your apartment. Um, it, it, living in dorms can be really helpful, but then there comes a point where you can use the uh, the world beyond that in order to try and increase your financial portfolio with the responsibility of lease and those sorts of things. Um, uh, uh, maintain a small credit card once you've gotten to third or fourth year, something that's you know maybe five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars that's even prepaid that you then pay off in segments that can increase your credit score even if it costs a little bit of interest uh, along the way. Don't ever look at your credit score. Don't don't respond to any of those ads that says we can tell you how to increase your credit score. Any of those sorts of things that just decreases your credit score because it shows that there's more activity. Don't ever sign up for cosmetic credit cards. These are the things that like the grocery stores or, or you, you know, these large companies. It's not just that the interest rates are high. Um, they are. If you pay them off uh, immediately, you may never pay interest on your credit cards. And there does seem to be benefits to these. 
However, if you show in your financial portfolio that you've got these thousands of dollars of credit cards, even if you're using them responsibly, at any moment, someone who won't consider you for a loan because you could access $3,000 just, just by spending on your credit cards. So keep your credit card debt potential very tight. Um, and, and really kind of in the end, you know, there's just things that, that you can't predict. You, your cars are going to break down and people are going to need money that you love and you're going to help them and you're going to make mistakes. And so part of the financial credit is to begin building your savings for retirement now. Um, even if that's $50 a month, the bank will take it and will invest it for you. This is the 401k and the RRSP and the different kinds of investment forms throughout the world. Make sure that you begin that early and then you commit to it. Uh, for me, I also bought uh, life insurance just before I turned 18 as a way of just keeping the price a little bit lower. Doing those little monthly things actually can uh, add up over time and give you a space where if you are in trouble, you do have somewhere to fall back on, in including insurance. You can sometimes borrow against the insurance that, that you've purchased. Well, living in the gig economy, unfortunately, you know, it can, it can pay the big dollars. I mean, it can be awesome. It can be uh, something that, that leads to a lot of money and that's why some people do it. I do it because I have this art project of my life that I want to do and this is the best way that I can do it. The best thing that I can offer the world. And so for me it has meant sacrificing things that I would have liked including travel or adventure or a certain kind of house or in a certain kind of neighborhood or a car that doesn't break down every three weeks. These are things that for me had to go to the side but i was able to do great things like travel and uh, you know start businesses and do adventures and and take on education years of education and, and professional training i was able to do those things because of those five basic principles one i didn't see the money as all mine when i made it the paycheck so i began that early uh, two um i began to creates flexibility in my life by living as simply as possible. Three, I created a economy of support, a network around me. Four, I tried to avoid self-delusion or at least recognize that I'm tempted towards it. And then five, I began building that portfolio that showed me as a good money manager early on. I hope these tips can help you as you navigate your earlier years of university. Take care.